Okay, everybody, I know we normally do stuff like shoutouts and life updates. We're going to get to a life update in a couple minutes, but due to the fact that so many people keep going on and on about why am I the only one on fire? Why am I the only one on fire? Someone has to put V out of the whole flames. I heard all the complaints, and for the next couple episodes, I won't be on fire. Are you happy now? Now on to Hubs with the life update. Hubs, give us a life update. I didn't get a deer this year. Ah, damn it. Yeah. Anyway, how do you like my comb over? Oh. I didn't or is even it know like you had a, a comb over. Is it like a Hitler haircut? Oh, gee, I need a haircut. I mean, you still got a full head of hair. <laughs> but we must now go into the intro. Growing up and growing old. Don't you feel the time? Moving forward every morning when we rise If only we could make it right Before the sun says goodnight Hello everybody, welcome back to What Grinds Our Gears, the podcast podcast owned by, ran by, and started by family But owned by a, a wonderful pair, a pair of people that I just cannot live without Although I really wish my life would allow me to text them more because I do love texting them every day. But we're, we're going to sweep, sweep that under the rug about my life problems. You guys don't need to hear that stuff. Anywho, we are going to be having a semi-empty office day. Like we sent the lawyers home. Clancy's gone home early. Everybody's got stuff going on like Sally's at a cake party. Schweebs and Phoenix are sick. Jazz is at her house, and Britt is hanging out with the hus <sighs> husband, so it's like the good old days, where it's me and the legendary, the all-time amazing, the king of all kings, the man with four titles that you all know by this point. Oh, goodness. Of Sir Hubs the Great. Hubs, how you doing this evening? Well, I'm doing wonderful, other than I think the time my time out in the cold these last few weeks has caught me something. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I feel like my job has made my right arm completely unusable Because every time I turn my neck, it's like I feel like pinching agony in my shoulder blade Wait, did you become a f I wish Oh, I don't wish <laughs> However, there would be perks to that job I know, that would be some perks That's why I'm <laughs> saying, I wish <laughs> It would be less dignifying, but the perks yes. would be better. Free backstage pass. It'd be perfect job for voyeurs, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, we might have two topics today because the first topic is a heavy one. It's a bit heavy. It, it's like the good old days, like I said, guys, where we're going to be hitting you with some heavy topics where the first topic... Diversity in fiction as well is in Hollywood. All right, yes, let's just get right to it. So what sprung this on us was me and V were having a conversation about, uh, well, V had brought up the Video Game Awards, and I haven't watched it. And then he informed me that God of War won, and I was like, yay! And Red Dead Redemption 2 lost, and everybody was like, no. And I was like, but why? And then we got into whole, that whole thing, and then how... V looked it up, and he's like, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a prequel. And I'm like, God, I hate prequels. And then we talked about Star Wars and how the prequels sucked. I still liked them, but they still sucked. <laughs> Which I don't think I'll get an argument from anybody about. And then we went on to the new trilogy of Star Wars. They said the prequels sucked worse than the new trilogy, and Episode Nine hasn't even come out yet. And then V brought up how there were some people out there that were kind of hating on the new protagonist and how they killed off... Luke Skywalker, and yeah, I was a little disappointed by that too, but man, how impressive that he could project himself across the universe. I mean, that's pretty fucking, to me, that's the most powerful Jedi right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, on to it, we got into this conversation about how, well, what Disney was trying to do, or I don't know if it's Disney in specific, but the Star Wars group is trying to do is kind of bring diversity by bringing a female protagonist to the films and which got me talking about you know how well i hate it when i'm gonna say it social justice warriors or moral 
po- the morality police come in and destroy my stories, you know? Which is a fair argument for a lot of cases, because I'm, I'm actually going to be an advocate to what you're saying, Hubs. What you're saying does have merit. You don't have to reshape a story to go into a market. You can have a set universe where it has a different division of stuff, but you don't need to remake it. That's the main argument I've always had when people said that the Ghostbusters reboot that they had was awful. I don't think it's terrible. I just feel like they didn't need to make it as a retcon. Just have it be they were inspired by or half the team was children of the original Ghostbusters and would have been fine. Actually, so V, let me... I saw this interview with Dan Aykroyd about that. I'm going to segue. Um, that Ghostbusters is actually... It's not a reboot or a retcon. According to Dan Aykroyd himself, this is a, a different Ghostbusters in a different universe. That's how Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and all the, the original actors could make their cameos and have n- absolutely no ties to the story. But And they're actually thinking about making another... Ghostbusters, with all the original cast except for Harold, R- Harold Ramis, of course. May he rest um, in peace. May he rest in peace. God bless Harold Ramis. <laughs> but, He's a funny man. <laughs> but that seems very convoluted to make a, a, multiple, a multiverse thing. It could have just been an easy thing of these were the original Ghostbusters, you see them in the news, how they did all this sort of stuff, They've had the Pils- Pillsbury Doughboy and shit happen. All this sort of stuff happen. And even Slimer from the TV show could have been like a for- or carry on mascot to be like, Hi, I'm here to give you the stuff from your dads and also to the new people. It would have been an easy thing. It's not like... Exactly. Especially, like, they even tied Leslie Jones to... to Ernie Hudson. Yes. They were already related in the film. Like, why? I completely 100% agree with you right there. They didn't have to reboot it. They didn't have to make it in a different universe. It could have been the same universe, and this could have been their kids, or this could have been... Shit, it could have been their grandkids at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, I thought the movie was freaking hilarious, to be honest with you. I loved it. I Again, the only reason I disliked it was for the exact same reasons you just gave, but that's not going to stop me from watching it. You know, (laughs) we're not saying that what Hollywood is doing for this particular thing is a bad thing. If they're trying to tell a story, stories need to be told. Films need to be made. That's the cycle of entertainment. It's just what what Hubs brought up about Michelle Rodriguez, about how instead of making a already established story and focusing on a different idea ideology of maybe they should be female maybe they should be a different race or different social classes stuff like that just focus on making an original story right and and however i do i do applaud because comic books that's been the free reign of all the outcast writers the, the ones that couldn't get picked up or what, you know, the, the, the true imaginations out there that created these stories to come up with, you know, Green Lantern isn't the same Green Lantern in every comic or, you know, one's Hal Jordan and the other one is, is a different character. Spider-Man, there's multiple, there's a Spider-Verse and there's multiple Spider-Man. Uh, Miles Morales exists in the same universe as Peter Parker though, correct? Ultimate Spider-Man, not Ultimate? the 616 <clears throat> Spider-Man. Okay. So, I mean, I, and I applaud that, you know, they could come up with a story and, and, I guess, technically reboot it and it become popular like that. I applaud that. But at the same time, I don't like it. I don't, like, comic books are different because they have multiple universes. They always have had multiple universes, you know, minus back in the 40s and 50s. And right. then when Inf- Crisis on Infinite Earth and Infinite Crisis happened for DC, but that's because DC loves to do reboots, retcons, and retellings of everything, especially Batman, because Batman is the only holy thing in the world. All <laughs> suck Batman's dick. Hey, at least in the film verse, Batman is king, okay? <laughs> 
At least we can say that. In comic books, Superman's always the fucking strongest. And la la la. Pretty boy Superman. Except for the Injustice storyline where Batman actually outsmarts him. So there we go. <laughs> um, no, but getting back to the Star Wars and what, what brought up this whole original thing. Like, instead of... And I get, I get why they can't come back 30-some years later and the original cast, the entire original cast, save for, you know, a few people who you didn't actually see their face, are yeah. still alive, right? Harrison Ford's alive. Carrie Fisher's alive. Well, was. Make was. Sure in peace. Mark Hamill is alive. I could see why they're like, oh, we're totally doing more Star Wars. Let's get the original cast. I get that. But instead of telling a new story with them in it why not finish their story like episode one could be the end of their story like a flashback almost right a completion of sorts with a for foreboding at the end kylo ren is born or whatever or he's disappeared or whatever and then take your episodes <clears throat> eight and nine Establish that new story and then begin your final trilogy. Why couldn't you have done that? Because the <laughs> books they, they made for the continued universe happen. Like Luke's actual wife of Mara Jade and his two to three kids. Le uh, Leia Skywalker becoming Leia Solo and actually becoming a Jedi of the Jedi Order and having three to four kids. And then Luke training his son Ben and then killing his own son Mara Jade trying to do her best for being murdered off unceremoniously Luke battling the dark side in his own right where he has two different lightsabers and then Disney saw that and was like oh you already have a big universe where even Boba Fett comes back with a with a fucking lightsaber with his own unique core of bounty hunters where he shoots things and slices stuff up. But see, Star Wars is different when it comes to the canonical ver universe in their books, right? Like, they've always allowed you to write a Star Wars book. But it was up to, like, George Lucas himself to christen that as canonical. <laughs> right? Until so, the mouse happened. Until the mouse happened. Exactly. Right. This is... Yes. And... <clears throat> After episode 8 came out and Mark Hamill died, which I guess there's a, still a question mark there because he's in episode 9 as well and they said that it is not in the same capacity as Obi-Wan and, and Darth Vader from the original trilogy when they show up as their spirit, you know, the spirits. <clears throat> so I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know. This is the same man that his voice acted as the Joker. The Joker. Oh my god, yes. And then they killed him in Arkham. <laughs> in the Arkham games. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody cried when him and... Oh, what is the voice actor for Batman in the animated series? Kevin Conroy. Yes, when they combined to do the killing joke one last time, that whole movie. And I still have yet to see it. Uh, oh, it is such an amazing ride to see that. Except for the first couple minutes, because then you're just like, why did Batman fuck Barbara? <laughs> okay, that was in the comics. Wait, is that in the movie, too? It's in the movie, but it was never in the Killing Joke one-shot. I could understand them saying, oh, yeah, Batman fucked Barbara. That's why uh, Dick Grayson is mad at Bruce. I'd be like, yeah, I, I could kind of see that. Yeah, but isn't, like, the new Batwoman series coming to the CW isn't she playing a uh a lesbian? Yeah. Yeah, that's his cousin. Who's cousin? Bruce's. What? So it's not Barbara Gordon. Gordon. No. The lesbian Batwoman is a cousin of Bruce Wayne. She oh. has her own sidekick. I don't remember. See, her I don't name. I don't follow DC so well. <laughs> I follow the I film universe. Great. I don't either. I just have comic book friends that just drill this information to me, just like, careful, this might help you in your job someday. I'm like, yeah, this will never happen. <laughs> so, I get, I get it. You know, they're trying to establish the, a new storyline with new characters, while bringing in the old characters. 
and I guess at some point I knew that Luke Skywalker was going to die, but I was hoping for, and I think this is kind of what everybody was hoping for, and maybe I'm wrong, that he would have his, his, not his Obi-Wan moment, but he never really got that. Take your time, man. That hero moment, except for when he threw the Emperor down the hole. That was his father. Saved his father. That. Oh, I'm sorry. See, he didn't even get that. <laughs> like, I spent three episodes in the original trilogy waiting for Return of the Jedi to come, and, and Luke Skywalker is finally badass. He's finally understands the Force, and he's going to go face his father, and he's going to do this. And he still doesn't get the win, right? Finally, yeah. they're going to bring him back in the new trilogy. They're going to bring him back in the new trilogy. He's going to play a major part in the new trilogy. Oh, when you say trilogy, I imagine three parts. He comes back and he plays a hologram of himself, and that's his hero moment? Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so disappointed by that. <laughs> that is the catalyst of how to make hubs cry. You, you bring is. up Star Wars. Luke Skywalker never got his moment. <laughs> <laughs> that poor, scruffy bastard. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. I, I know there's many characters in Star Wars, and, and Luke Skywalker is not the favorite to everybody, but he is mine. <laughs> he's the favorite to a lot of people. They were just waiting for for Leia to pick up the lightsaber, and I'm just saying to everyone else, if you wanted that so badly, there are always the books. But now that <laughs> Disney's bought out uh, Lucas Films, those are no longer canon. Oh, oh, update. Daredevil has been canceled. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The and only one we made now. You, you want to know the stinger, though? It's coming to the Disney streaming site? Yes. With a new cast. Yes, and it's not the same story. It's not, not going to be set in the same universe. It's going to be their own telling. So right now, Netflix only has two characters left. Which are going to be gone soon, trust me. Which is Jessica Jones and The Punisher, because The Punisher Season 2 has not come out yet. Or Season 3 of Jessica Jones, which finished filming so soon as those two were done. You know what's and happening the, next. And you remember the rumors that I was telling you about Netflix canceling those Luke Cage and Iron Fist about how I thought that it was to kind of spit in the eye of Disney, you know? Maybe not so they couldn't use the characters again, but they couldn't use that story. And who's going to want to pick up a canceled show, you know? Because mm -hmm. Disney's going to bring it to their own platform. That's exactly what is happening. Disney plans on bringing these all to their own platform because they're greedy like that. And God damn you, Disney. <laughs> I mean that double-edged, too, because they used to be the company of... Uh, Walt Disney was a very family-friendly and religious... Uh, I don't know if it was Catholic or Christian. Or, he was a very Christian man. Uh, Christian among evil among things he did, like buying... Lying, cheating, and stealing characters from other people like Mickey Mouse. Not to mention the <laughs> white supremacism, the anti-Semitism, and the fact that when... They, this is actually a documented thing. When an actual black family came to Walt Disney World, he personally had the guards throw them out and make sure they never came back so long as he lived. Funny thing. Funny thing Walt Disney taught us. I guess it wasn't really Walt Disney. I mean, there's probably plenty and plenty of millionaires and billionaires out there. Doesn't matter what your beliefs are, as long as you have enough money to sweep it under the rug. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just remember that, folks. Because there's targets on our backs now. Yeah. <laughs> I will see you in the afterlife, Aaron. Well, I've never been to any Disney Worlds or Disneylands, despite my, you know, protests of parents wanting to take me there. Begging my parents to take me there. Oh, I went to Disney World a few times. <laughs> I'm sure it's fun. It's not. <laughs> I've been to Six Flags quite a Six, few times. Six Flags is the best, but we're getting way <laughs> off topic from where we stuck. <laughs> it's like we were still on the reservation, then all of a sudden, Disney! All right, all right. Ah, what about Universal Studios? I hear they got a pretty good setup. <laughs> 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 Anyways... Uh, so, 
I'm all for the diversity and equality and all of that in, in Hollywood and everywhere. I, I'm I'm totally for it. I'm all for it. But I don't I don't want to see something that I love suffer because of it. You know what I mean? That's and I'm not thing. saying that I'm not saying that that happens every time, right? There are some cases where it works. I have to think, and you probably already have some, or maybe could think of one. But I don't know. Now we're thinking about it. I know there's one because I know I saw one. There is one that I know. Oh, anyway. Oh, I got it. I got it. Little bit weird, but I feel like when Marvel actually did make Falcon Captain America, that it kind of worked. I agree. But for a different reason. Like you I'm see... not saying it because he's he's a minority. I'm saying it because it was an actual progression that made sense. Yes. Well, not only that, but because Captain America was kind of like the Doctor Who of the Marvel Universe. He was, Steve Rogers was human. And in the comics, Bullseye, or not Bullseye, sorry, oh, back up. Uh, The guy with the skull on his face. Crossbones! Crossbones assassinates Captain America, leading to Bucky Barnes originally taking over the mantle, right? Yes. And after Bucky Barnes... Or loses it back to Steve Rogers. I don't know the, how it went to Falcon, but it was it was kind of written into the story that Captain America doesn't have to be Steve Rogers, right? right? Which makes sense. He's human, and I think Marvel did a wonderful job in the film verse making making the change because uh, in the comic books it's much more progressed because he I don't think he gets frozen in ice until later on, right? It's just a natural progression up until he gets shot. And then it spawns a new universe again where he's, like, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he's frozen in ice for how many years, and he's in modern day. Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> I thought that was actually pretty pretty smart on Marvel's part. Just, just freeze him in ice, bring him back to fight the Red Skull in the future. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's the only thing I could think of where it's just, like, that's the only time where the, where oh, the no. whole... Oh, no, War Machine. That was a good one, too. That was I mean, an they original didn't, they character, didn't, though. Right. They didn't really... It wasn't Iron Man giving up his, you know... They mantle. did try to give it to a black teenager once, and it's been a bad idea to fans for a long time. But I but I like War Machine. I liked, I've always liked that character. and But I guess that it kind of stems from two points. Yes, it, he is... He's... Tony Stark's own knockoff, you know, I mean, Tony Stark gives him the armor, but he's also an original character. Yes. So they they, they killed two birds with one stone. They, they took the original story and was like, oh, wait, this would be cool. Let's have him be a military veteran, you know, an Air Force pilot. <laughs> I mean, th- that one they did really well, I thought. Even though it's not technically a a uh, diversity reboot. change, yeah, a rebooting of the character. Well, War Machine's always been black, though, hasn't he? He's always been black. Yeah, Rhodey has always been black. Uh, I think DC Universe handled it pretty well with the Hal Jordan and and the. Uh, 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 well, there's Hal Jordan, Guy Gardner, John Stewart. Then uh, Kyle Rayner, but like, everyone has like issues with Kyle Rayner for some reason. Uh, but I mean, that's that's another character that has multiple. Green Lantern isn't one person; it's an it's a it's a group of people. It's a core, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. <laughs> so wait, 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 wait. Could they reboot Green Lantern? Yes and with, no. With a new lantern. Yes. And still salvage 
Ryan Reynolds' lantern. Oh, that's a tall order, but they could do it. <laughs> In the nude. <laughs> there you go, Ryan Reynolds. Shout out to you. You make a Green Lantern that fits and works with you in it. <laughs> How about that? Uh, Maybe just as a cameo. <laughs> just as like a, sing- a single cameo. So like, who are you? I'm you, but lamer. <laughs> oh, I'm the Deadpool. Let's <laughs> just make a Deadpool lantern. There you go. We- it's just like that's a whole Marvel DC crossover. There you go. Why don't we address that, Marvel and DC? Why don't you just make a film together <laughs> and just say screw the cinematic universes of both our genres? It'll actually probably save DCs. <laughs> oh, oh, but DC don't want that right now. They they don't want to have the smoke. Oh no! Have you heard the latest with the whole Ben Affleck Batman and and what what he's supposedly supposed to be and why DC has launched all of these film reboots to be made by independent directors the, the whole Joaquin Phoenix is the Joker thing and have you heard the reasoning behind this no I have not so DC is claiming that it's supposed to be well, we just want you know our we want people to have their artistic freedom these are not set in the DC universe Depending upon how well they do in the box office. Then they can set up their whole Crisis on Infinite Earths. Or Flashpoint would be, Flashpoint. The, would be the most um, usable thing. Because that's their reboot machine right there. How do we and, make a and, new timeline of the new 52? How about we and, have the Flash go back and save his mom? And... <laughs> Well, at least they have an out, right? (laughs) They haven't used that one yet. They've used it in the TV show, but that's not part of the film film universe, right? That's just the TV show. But get this. There's even a rumor going around that Ben Affleck's Batman is supposed to be the Flashpoint Batman. That's why it explains all the people he kills in the movie. He totally killed those guys. <laughs> I'm being serious, B. This I is, know. This is and not the my fact theory. that people are saying this makes so much sense as to why <laughs> I never see him as Bruce Wayne. Well, and, and so they even have an explanation as to why he calls himself Bruce in Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> he calls himself Bruce in honor of his son. <laughs> but when he's under the cowl, he is Thomas. <laughs> so I'm guessing it's, the Joker is the, literally his wife that had a sex change. I was going to say, that would be the only thing that makes sense as to why Jared Leto did that with the Joker. <laughs> In reality, he truly loves Batman. That's why he treats Harley Quinn like shit. <laughs> Oh God! Oh my, g- yo! You know what? You know what? The, the best part about the, these, like, okay, it's like DC was shooting darts at a bar one night with Marvel, and Marvel was just kicking their ass with bullseye after fucking bullseye after fucking bullseye, right? <laughs> and so DC's like, okay, you know what? I got a new game, Marvel. I got a new game for you because I've had plenty to drink now. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to beat you. Here's okay. the game. What's the game? Here's the game. We're each going to take a handful of, like, 20 darts. Okay. And you know, like, you know how hard it is to hold 20 darts in your hand at one time. One's going to fall out, you know, whatever. Right. Anyways, don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. So you're going to take the 20 darts and you're just going to throw them at the friggin' dartboard over there. Okay. First one to get a, first one to get a bullseye wins. Okay. And Marvel's like, Marvel's the sober one over here, like, yeah, let's do that. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll totally do that, DC. He said, all right, you just a bet. You're going to pay me tomorrow, right? Oh, yeah, I got I got you covered. Totally you know, got you. Not that. All right, here goes. He throws 20 darts at the fucking board. 15 bounce off the wall. <laughs> 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 
two of them hit the dartboard. One's a bullseye. He's like, see, I fucking told you, man. Our <laughs> universe is over here. Like, so this is this is what it looks like. Uh. <laughs> 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 That's basically what they did. They just grabbed a bunch of rocks and it's like, you know, one of these is bound to skip across the water. Just fucking throw them <laughs> all at the same time. And then, and, and then, but DC has the most perfect out compared to Marvel when it comes to, like, outs in comic Because everybody knows Flashpoint exists. Flashpoint. At any point in time, some genius director like Christopher Nolan could come back and say, I'm going to fix your problems, boy. And they're going to be like, fuck yeah! I had all the other. I want to see you do this shit. And Flashpoint comes out. It doesn't matter what happens in all the other movies because Flashpoint erases it all, and we're back to square one with a whole <laughs> new continuity of things. Like Marvel doesn't even have that. They do <laughs> now. Yeah, now. But it took several years just like, yeah, we have all these these universes built up, all this sort of stuff. Now it's the all new, all different Marvel. <laughs> several generations of continuity. It still exists, but in a brand new universe. <laughs> Unlike DC, where it's just like, oh shit, we fucked up. Uh, uh, what's doing well? Well, everything. Fuck it! Flashpoint! Why? <laughs> Who cares? Flashpoint! <laughs> hit the button! Just hit the button! But, Kill switch! But Wonder Woman <laughs> and Superman and Batman and everything's doing well! Push the goddamn button! <laughs> Just reset it to zero. Do you know what this means? <laughs> We're gonna lose a bunch of money, man! I it's don't like, care! It's like Y2K all over again! And then New 52 bombs... All of a sudden, we gotta reset everything! We gotta bring back Wally fucking West! What? What? But dude, we already sank up all of our money making these crappy 52 comics. I don't care! Press the goddamn flash button! <laughs> the only one in that universe that can seem to do that. <laughs> but has trouble capturing a man who can shoot sh fucking lightning bolts. <laughs> The man can turn back time. Fuck everything up. Realize what he fucked up. Go back in time again. Fix it. Go back to the current timeline. Figure out to fix the problem he couldn't solve in the first place without time travel. <laughs> Wally wa Okay. I'm so the Flash has to be the smartest or dumbest superhero ever <laughs> the man has to be a genius <laughs> not even Tony Stark could do this shit I mean you saw him in the new trailer of the Avengers he's not even thinking time travel he's just broken I ran out of ran out of junk food he's floating floating in, in the middle of space like, like, I ran out of water days ago, but I have no snacks. <laughs> Time travel's not even on his mind. <laughs> and he's supposed to be one of the smartest. And then there's the girl from Wakanda who's supposed to be smarter than him. And she's just crying in a corner. Over at DC Universe, and Flash is running circles around the world. Fuck it! Just to roll this fucker back a few years. <laughs> Again. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. That was the most beautiful moment in what grinds our gears the podcast history. <laughs> that is by far the most beautiful moment ever. Best segue ever. <laughs> I'm so glad that we did that. Oh, we have God. discovered something. We've revolutionarily discovered something. The Flash. Not just Wally West, not just Barry Allen. The Flash, the Flash itself. In general. The is Flash the smartest. Force itself is the smartest dumbass creation in <laughs> all of comic book history. <laughs> I mean, I mean, okay, there was, there was that one moment in, in X-Men 
continuity when they actually went back in time and, and they said, but they did it wrong in the movie because it wasn't Wolverine that went back in time. It was actually Kitty Pride that went back in time. Yeah. And, and, and saved the world. But they only did that once. <laughs> it was like, we only got one shot at this. Let's not fuck up. And it wasn't as big a moment as Flashpoint where it involved the entire DC universe. No, it just affected the X-Men. Everyone else is just is just all fucked up. But yep. I'm still in a wheelchair. Charles, who cares about you right now? We need to save our own world. But I'm in a wheelchair. Fuck you and your wheelchair. I do like that one. I do like that one. Even even if they did make Charles Xavier a white guy, they made him handicapped. Yes. Yet. Yet, he is still one of the most powerful mutants in existence. True. I like the fact they made a handicapped guy the most powerful telepath in the entire Marvel Universe. Yes. Let's get to that fact. I know we're segueing, but let's just make this topic, too. Let's just fucking keep going. Let's roll with it. We'll have another epiphany, V. Uh. <laughs> um, the fact that, and they touched on it a little bit in Logan. Yeah, they, they about kind of how it. how the the true breadth of Xavier's power. He can literally kill you. Not just you. He could wipe out it. he he wiped out his entire children. Like the X Men are his kids because I don't see him getting his dick up for Moira McTaggart. And he soon. did that. On, he did that on accident, though. Yeah, by accident, thinks all the cornstarch. He didn't even mean to do that. Again, I'm like, why cornstarch <coughs> as the, as the thing? But they did allude to it in one of the original X Men trilogy movies, and I can't remember which one. But where that's they a act- weird thing, though. What's that? Cornstarch. <laughs> corn. St- I don't know what you're talking about with the cornstarch. No, they were saying that the pesticide stuff with the cornstarch and oh. Logan suppressed the mutant gene, and I'm like, corn no, that starch? was just. That was just the, uh, so the fertilizer they were using for the, the agricultural products it wasn't just the cornstarch. It was all agriculture. They started putting it in their sodas and their beers and things like that, this mutagenic suppressor. Okay, that I understand, but when they're just focusing mostly on cornstarch, I'm like, what? I don't know. Probably a talking point or a easy way to... Ex- I don't know. I, I don't know, V. I got nothing. <laughs> Anyways, um, they did touch on it on, a little bit in the original trilogy of the X-Men where, who was it, snuck into the Cerebro and switched? Because he used Cerebro to find mutants. Yeah. Well, somebody went in and fucked with his Cerebro and changed it so that he was targeting humans. And when he started thinking real hard, you could see in that movie that the humans started hurting them, you know, dying... Well, not dying, but convulsing and, and showing pain and agony. That is the power of Charles Xavier. <sighs> at any moment, if he'd have ever just gotten pissed off at Deadpool enough, <laughs> he could have just multiply killed him multiple times, just over and over and over, just by melting his brain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just at, at will, just by thinking of it. And yet there are mutants stronger than him. One... Not Jean Grey, because she is the most powerful telekinetic, but not telepath. Correct. She she is a very powerful telepath, but not as strong as Charles. Nope. She is more powerful with her telekinesis. As a matter of fact, all kinesises, pyrokinesis, after the Phoenix thing. Uh, anyways, his son is actually the most powerful mutant. Legion. Legion. And he's not even a bad guy, even though they paint him as a bad guy for many episodes in the comics. And he's actually not a bad guy. He's just a misunderstood <clears throat> mutant that just pushed into bad situations. With multiple personalities. Yeah, many m- that, that's the odd thing. It's like, Charles, this is your son. Who's the mom again? Moira. Oh, damn, your dick got up. What? And what? she fucking hid him from you for decades. Told you nothing about him. Tried to fix her, fix him on her own. <clears throat> ended up fucking him up worse. Now he's a threat to the entire planet. And hey, Charles, this is your son. I have a wait, son. Wait, what? <clears throat> wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Wait. You made him worse before talking to me. 
Like everyone just be like, Charles, I didn't know your dick even worked anymore. I didn't know either. How old is he? He's like 37. What? What? And no one told me? <laughs> yeah, you know all those tremors you'd feel in your brain? That was him trying to reach out to you, but you couldn't tell because I had all these layers of mental blocks. What is wrong with you, Moira? I thought I could oh fix them on my own. <laughs> That's another thing. They did make a psychotically unstable character that is compelling... As well as making it realistic. Because you can't have a psychotically unhinged character be good or evil. They're just... They did that with Deadpool first, though. I yeah, mean... but he was like a, he was like a quote-unquote spin-off of DC's Deathstroke. Oh, no, not... No, they, it was a blatant rip-off. They even admitted that it was a blatant rip-off. This was right after the whole um, DC-Marvel team-up where Dark Claw was... Somehow created, okay. um, <laughs> and they're just like, "Fuck it!" <laughs> you have Slade. What is it, Slade? Slade Wilson, isn't it? Slade Joseph Wilson. Slade Wilson. Oh, we're just gonna make a character named Wade Wilson. We're not even gonna change his last name. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> and make him the Merc with the mouth. <laughs> they just, they Deathstroke had no fucks fights to the go. Titans. Deathstroke is a fucking troll. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> but yes I agree the only problem I had with it is they made him a bad guy first but it was written into the story that way <clears throat> like you find out later on that it's not really him and he he really can't ever, at any point really control his powers his true self can't control any of the power god no no. So when he's in his when he's in, when he is himself and it's him, alo himself alone in the brain, he has no controls o over his powers. He's hurting people on accident. He doesn't want to hurt people. He's actually a very peaceful, uh, nonviolent. Wants you know. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. Like his dad. He, right. But he can't. There's so much power in his brain. He has more power than his father. This man almost killed Wolverine. But Wolverine was the only one because of the regenerative ability he has. Again, how that was <laughs> written in there. Could And this is where uh, the uh, X-Men movies stole kind of from the comic books. In the, the, the third movie where he stabs Jean Grey yeah. <clears throat> to get her to stop using the Phoenix. He did that to Legion. And it was enough, like, ugh! For Legion to have that moment, <clears throat> and I think I'm maybe this was an animated film I saw, not the comic. Um, for Charles to get into his son's brain, you know, it was it didn't even stop Legion. It was just enough of a sc scratch <laughs> to get him to go, oh, and then Charles got into his brain to kind of suppress everything that was happening. Or maybe I just made that up now. I don't know. No, it's a good that, story. that fits though. <laughs> In the movie, in the X-Men movie, it is that that, that kills Jean Grey. Wolverine's the hero. They set him up. In the comics, Wolverine's just the uh, hurdle, right? Yeah. It's the hurdle that he tripped over. And then Charles is the hero that comes in and, and stops it. Which he usually is when he's involved in the comics, except for when he dies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many times he's died now. Uh, let's see, uh, I lost I remember after 15. The first time was the biggest, because they had a whole story arc just on that. And then he comes back and has and an Infinity back. Stone for some reason. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that was wonderful. That was a wonderful, long period of time to talk about diversity, as well as the absurdity of comic books. And just how well it works, because in comics, she can just say, eh, let's fucking do it. It does <clears> work, work the same way in Hollywood, though, unfortunately. It does not. It does not work the same way in Hollywood. People do not react the same way. You can't just all of a sudden be like, we're making this one show, yeah, about your favorite book characters, yeah, and we're going to change the main character to Hispanic. You mother... I'll kill you! I'll fucking kill you! <laughs> <clears throat> I, I guess I really, I guess I really shouldn't care. 
everything's done, you know, with all the reboots and everything going, I really shouldn't care. Because I know what's going to happen anyways, right? Unfortunately, yes. Because the older we get in, the more everyone's going to be like, oh, no. Well, well hold on. Why, why couldn't they take an example of what they do with, like, I don't know, say, the television shows that come from the UK, like The Office? When they brought it to the US, they didn't use the same characters. It no. was the same premise. It was the same show. Pretty much. But, but it was entirely different characters. Yeah, but no one really knew because... You, you gotta admit, Aaron, like, 90% of Americans are kind of fucking stupid. I, I... They did it with the IT crowd. They did it with, a, um... Being human. Being human, yeah, but that was just god-awful. Um... It was this one show they did where it was the actor from Merlin that played Uther. He was like this very sexual business businessman that owned this company where he basically was so lewd to everyone, e even sexually licked the glass like, yeah. And I'm oh. like, what the fuck? Then they brought to I... America and I'm like, dude, are you trying oh. to fuck everyone in your own company? I don't know that one. <laughs> I don't know that one. But, I mean, couldn't they use that example? Couldn't they do that? They could. Like, it, it could be the same fucking story. But, say, okay, but the main character's going to be Hispanic. Okay, so his name's Hector. He's a different person, right? Mm-hmm. Couldn't they do that? They could. They could. Problem. <laughs> this, is a, this is a weird problem, but still a problem. The international market tends to be iffy about how the interpretation is handled. Meh. <laughs> Just pull a DC. <laughs> Just grab 20 darts and throw them at the fucking wall. Just get so blitzed. Just throw <laughs> darts everywhere. One of them will land. Maybe two. Who fucking knows? Well, we already know they make, they make multiple versions of the film. Specifically to certain markets like China and other uh, uh, countries over there, Russia. Mm. <laughs> I know this for a fact because there was a, a issue with uh, which was it? Was it Age of Ultron? Yeah, Age of Ultron had a big problem it's in China. Yeah. Specifically for the uh, quote-unquote thing that happened to uh, Zoko uh, Zokovia, where the earth shifted and people were being crushed by buildings, when Asia and Japan happened to be with some earthquake issues over the last few years. You mean they sit on a fault line, right, B? Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> They sit on an a one of the ass cracks of the world. Yep. And at any moment, could erupt in a fart. Um, <laughs> worst analogy for a fault line ever. Uh, uh, but they changed certain scenes. They shot certain scenes specifically for those markets. Yes. So they already have practice doing it. We don't have to worry. We're good. <laughs> yeah, but it's just... Like how you said with The Office, where in the UK and in America, they're technically both the same show because they both have dumbass uh, bosses, idiotic co-workers, and all that sort of stuff. It fits the bill because it's how American people see, see The Office life and how the Brits see The Office life. It's not I the same it, with stuff it. like... Being human in the UK, where you have this introspective story about monsters are people too. And then the US, you have monsters. They're douchebags. <laughs> I, liked, I liked the US version. <laughs> but Jeez, you gotta admit, they were douchebags. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the vampire was quite a douchebag. And then the werewolf's girlfriend turned out to be quite a big douchebag as well. I always liked the werewolf. <laughs> I knew... <laughs> I love. I, I'm sorry. I'll pick a werewolf in a vampire in a vampire fight. <laughs> By the way, segue. I just watched The Vampire's Assistant the other night. Uh, and me up and until, my wife watched that not that long ago. Up until the last fifteen minutes of the movie, maybe twenty. 
I was like, why didn't this do better? Uh, like, this is a great young adult movie, you know? This that is, last it, 15 <clears throat> minutes, though. It, it, well, fucking time skips, plot holes. Like, I could count them, and I didn't even know the story until I had watched the movie. Yeah. Like, wow. What did you do to this? You sabotaged your own film. Like, well, we have a $40 million budget. And I looked it up. It was a $40 million budget mm -hmm. that they had. Did you run short on time or something? Nope. The fuck happened? Cause the they book had enough time to make it. The book series is like, well, it was like that wide when I looked it up. I don't, there had to be like nine, nine books there at least. Yes. Because it's part of a series of Cirque de Freak. Yes. Right? The Vampire's Assistant is one book. And I'm like, okay. So the last 15 to 20 minutes threw me, and I'm like, I have no idea where I'm at in the story now, other than the fact that everybody's alive, nobody died, even the bad guy. Um, <laughs> which they didn't even explain how that happened, other than showing what happened to the little... Anyways. Yeah, my, so I was like, my okay. wife had the same reaction. She was just like, I have no idea what happened, but it was okay. So I went, uh, I went to IMDb, a good source of information for all movies, because uh, they show the budget and then what it actually grossed, you know, or made for the for the film. Their budget was forty million fucking dollars, and they made fourteen. Yeah, I can I see why they like, didn't make sequel films. Yeah, yeah, they lost a little bit there. Wow. Wow. How do you fuck up that badly? Well, it only takes about 15 minutes. Let me show you. <laughs> Have it's you like, seen this on TV? Because you don't need it. I'll just come right in and do it. It's like, do you want to you... know how to fuck up a good thing right now? Step mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hold my beer. So, that, so there's an example that DC Universe has not completely fucked up yet. Because DC Universe, they make, they make Green Lantern, right? And it yes. bombs. And DC Universe is like, oh my god, kill this character. Kill this. It never happened. We lost Ryan Reynolds. Wait, Ryan Reynolds is making fun of us? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Whoever made the vampire's assistance coming over here. Hey, DC, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> great movie, great movie, great movie. 15 minutes to the end. Holy fuck. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if John C. Riley is an odd pick to play... A demure vampire. Actually, it fits for the circuit never freak the sort of. I didn't either, but I researched it. He actually kind of fits it to be a circus freak type of vampire yes. of demure. Well, and he's a good enough actor to do it. He's a great actor, you know. And I'm not complaining. His performance was great. I loved him in the movie. It's just when I look at his face. It's not demure enough. I see stepbrothers. <laughs> True that. You know, or as is you know, as I'm seeing in commercials nowadays. Home, Holmes and Watson. Holmes and Watson. <laughs> oh my Where's God. Where's Sherlock? Where's Sherlock? I never left Watson. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh my God. That movie's gonna make so many people burst out laughing. John C. Riley started out as a serious actor. I, I don't know where he went to college, but I thought it was some prestigious acting college, something like Juilliard or something like that. And he's an amazing actor. And then he makes films with Will Ferrell, and I'm like, I can't see him any other way. What did you do? You ruined uh... it for me. <laughs> Not that those those movies are funny. I'm not making. I'm just. It's hard to look at him as a serious actor after I see him <laughs> getting pissed about Will Ferrell teabagging his nutsack all over his drum set. You know, like... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going. I'm going too far, V. We're not even in the universes anymore. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> Lost in space. There's another reboot. Oh. Oh, yeah. Where we're <laughs> just like, that robot and his cake. And I'm like, y'all looking at a robot's ass very closely. <laughs> what the uh, hell is wrong with you? Uh, on a, <clears throat> so, uh, we could do Lost in Space a different time. Uh, um, 
The return Wait. of the reboots. A reboot. A reboot. <laughs> That me and uh, the kids actually watched on Netflix because Netflix brought it back from the grave. Uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. The Gauntlet. <laughs> we watched Mac and Me. <laughs> and am my, I straight or am I gay? My, Mac and my, me. Daughter, my daughter giggled through the whole thing. Thought the fucking jokes were hilarious. <laughs> Oh yeah, you have aliens that have their mouths like their buttholes. Woo! And they whistle to communicate. <laughs> and you gotta hold your hands in a certain way. <laughs> ah, damn it. I can't whistle. And they're me. apparently they're apparently invulnerable unless they do not have Coca-Cola. Oh yeah, the refreshing taste of Coca-Cola. Oh my god. That is product placement right there. I don't know when the last time you saw Mac and Me is, but they're literally on death's door until they get themselves some Coca-Cola. I know. I, I saw the riff myself, and then uh, Atlantic Rim. Yes. Oh, yes, God. Atlantic Rim. From the makers of Sharknado, <laughs> <laughs> we give you Atlantic Rim. Totally not a knockoff of Pacific Rim, even though it is. Just like when we did Transmorphers 1 through 3. Totally not a ripoff of Transformers. <laughs> oh, God. We should do an entire episode just on that film company. Because <laughs> the only successes they've had is Sharknado and the freaking sci-fi series knockoff of The Walking Dead, which they took in their own complete direction and made it good somehow. <laughs> Okay, we're putting that on the big ass whiteboard. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. What? Uh, where? Where is the whiteboard end? Uh, we had to sell some things recently. Where does it end? <laughs> like I see on the very top, it's like the Punisher movies, and I'm trying to find the end, but it's just like. I can't see a, a blank space in between dumbasses that got famous. Oh, God. And this other one. I don't even know how this one came up of the Back to the Future versus other time travel movies. Which one oh God. better? Let's do it. Let's where's, do it. Where's the space, Aaron? I don't know, but I need you to talk for about 30 seconds. Okay. Um. <laughs> I guess I'll start off with uh, going over final thoughts. Let's see. Final thoughts about this whole big spiel of diversity and then diluting into, of course, just the shooting the shit. Um, sorry. Drinking a lot of fruit juice. Um, the thing about diversity in all realms, whether it's for the fictional or for the big ol' thang of things that is Hollywood. Diversity has to come not as a, a given thing to do, given the decade. It has to come as something that is genuine for a creation because it is well-deserved. You don't need to have something be automatically, oh, we have to make these characters African Americans. We need to make them Hispanic. We need to make them Asian. We need to make them Native American. We need to make them all these different races and genders and whatnot to fit the criteria. And that, in and of itself, just shows that creators need to get back onto the whole creative train rather than just making it seem like they have nothing else better to do than to just dig up the graveyard of shows that have prospered or shows that have faltered and just make something unique from it. I agree. Um, <clears throat> there are some cases where they do dig up a dead project and reboot it and it's successful with a new character, but it's always a new character, right? It's, it's, it's something new. Out of the old. Which is fine. I'm fine with that. You want to bring something new out of the old, that's fine. <clears throat> Don't rehash the same shit with, with the same character that's not actually the same character. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? Like, like, I love creativity. I love comic books 
that was my refuge as a child. I escaped there from books because I had to read for school. You know, they make you do that. Yeah. <laughs> now they just look at tablets. But I escaped into graphic novels because they allowed them in our libraries. Mouse was my first graphic novel that I read, and it was about the Holocaust, told through the eyes of mice. And it was a good book. Good graphic novel. And there's two of them, and they were both good. That was my introduction. I read that, believe this or not, <laughs> they had this in our middle school library. Oh, my God. Sixth grade. You know, I, I was 11 or 10. 11? Let's see, I started late, so I was probably older. I was probably 11. <laughs> 10? I, I can't remember. Anyways, I was young. That was, my, that was my introduction to graphic novels. I'm like, holy shit. They're showing things in this that they don't show in books. They're talking about things in this that they don't sh talk about in my books. Right? They, sh they, they talk about, and there's pictures in graphic novels, so they show you the smoke coming out of the smokestacks where they're burning the Holocaust victims. Yeah. They show you the scenes where a, a Nazi general is, is holding a gun to another mouse's head in this graphic novel. And I'm like, wow, so this... You know, I, I'm seeing history. Not, like, history in my eyes. Like, hi actual history. They're telling the story of what happened in a way that I am interested. You know? Which leads me to X-Men and Wolverine and Spider-Man and Batman and Victor Zaz. Probably one of my favorite comic book uh, uh, episodes. Uh, Issues, yeah, Is an issue because I, I own the issue and I don't remember what issue it is. It's in my comic book box where Batman has to deal with Victor Zaz and just how lunatic, how just how big of a lunatic he really is. For every victim he has, he puts a scar on his body yeah. as, as a tally mark, and his entire body. And in the comic book, they show him butt naked. I mean, his ass. They don't show the front. Every inch of him is covered in tallies. This man has more kills than any other freaking uh, Batman villain. But, you know, here would be the kicker, though. <laughs> How would you feel if they take all the beauty that is Zaz and recast that as a female that had his exact backstory, but it's not the same character? As long as if it's not the same character, I'm fine with it. No, it's Zaz in name, but it's a female person with all the tallies, the whole history. No, no, and and this is this is the reason why because that is Victor Zaz, all right. That character bio, that that everything, that is Victor Zaz. That's his life, just like I am me, right? You're not gonna if I die, go hire somebody else to play me. Oh God, no. You know what I mean? And, and I'm not talking about movies now. I'm talking in, in comic books. In, in films, you can do it because there's a lifespan, right? Chris Hemsworth isn't going to live forever, <laughs> right? Nope. So eventually, they're going to continue making Thor movies as long as it makes money. So if, if Chris Hemsworth ever dies, they're not going to stop making Thor movies, all right? This is my life, though. This is my biography. This is me. This is who I am. When I die, my story stops. It continues through my children, which could be one way to look at it. Right. It continues through my wife, which would be another way to look at it. But my story is done. And it's the same with a comic book person or character. That biography is them. That is, that's who they are. So if you want another Zaz that's not Victor Zaz... Fine, I'm all for it. You want her to be female? Great. But it's not Victor Zaz. If they did it the way they did the Flashpoint Joker, booyah. Go for it. That made perfect sense, and it fit in that universe. And it made... It was emotional. I read some of the panels and shit from... That, that shit makes you think. Like, she was still in there. And that was why Batman couldn't... He, she was the only villain Batman couldn't kill, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's his wife. 
because they share the same bond over why they're both fucking crazy. Thomas Wayne knows he's crazy. He's just found a way to use it in a positive manner, so to speak. <laughs> just like she knows she's crazy, but she's used it to destroy everything that killed her son. That is a beautiful story. And it played out beautifully in the comic books. And it was a Joker, but it wasn't the Joker. That's the way to do it. DC Universe did anything right in rebooting a character or trying to branch out that story right there. It's the Batman and, and Joker of Flashpoint. That was beautiful, man. But again, you know, I mean, I'm all for it. Because... Look at it. I've, I've been watching Gotham. I caught up all of, on my Gotham shows on Netflix. And I think the casting that they did for that show is perfect, save for the Penguin, even though I like the Penguin in the show. Yeah, the Penguin I'm Robert, too is, Robert Lord is too pretty. Right. <laughs> He's not, you know, a big, heavy set Penguin-looking motherfucker. But I like the way they made him the Penguin in Gotham. He's the Penguin because of his limp. Yeah. And the way he walks. And he's got a little pointy nose. So I get it. And it works for the show. All the rest of the characters, perfectly cast. Victor Zaz, he's not completely insane yet. <laughs> he hasn't gone completely off the rails because he still has a lord and master when it comes to the mob boss or whoever is in charge at the time. Season right? 5 will change all that. <laughs> and he doesn't have... He's not scarred all over his body yet. The Joker, however, which we can get into with a different topic, but... When Sally gets back, we'll probably yes. get all over that. But yes, I mean, there is a way to do things the, that, that make sense and, and work. And then there's a way to just fuck things up. Like, take your liberties. Do whatever you want. You want to change... You want to change the character? Great, change the character. I'm all for that shit. <laughs> you know, when they made the Spider-Verse, they didn't take Peter Parker and just make a female version of him. They actually took a character that existed in a different universe. Gwen Stacy, who is dead in Peter Parker's universe. They also made his daughter, but they made her no longer canon thanks to One More Day because Peter Parker can't be married because we don't want him to grow up. Yeah, he is the Peter Pan of the Marvel Universe. He's a 45-year-old fucker. <clears throat> that doesn't come till later, and I have the comic with Craven. <laughs> Anyways. Well, I thought Tobey Maguire made a good older Batman. He's out of college. He's Older Spider-Man. Yeah, old, old sorry, Spider-Man. Well, Fucked I, up. I mean, he <laughs> did, but then when you read the comics, it's like, I don't even have life insurance. <laughs> Pete, you're you're damn near in your forties and you don't have life insurance. No. Nope. Yeah, when does the word wait, maybe that's the, okay, you know what, B, here's another one. Here's, here's the epiphany that we were looking for <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Flash is the smartest. Right? Okay. So Spider Man is actually actually a genius, right? Peter Parker is actually a genius. He went to college. He's the one that helped Doctor Octopus create the, the anyways. He's a science major. So we know that Peter Parker's smart. Yes. <laughs> right? He has to be the dumbest smart fucker on the planet. I know. It's like, he's Pete, the most you're damn near in your 40s. What the fuck <laughs> you doing? I'm he, saving lives. Okay. Got what are you doing at home? Well, I got my I got my aunt living in a, in a busted as fuck ass house. I get it. I get it now, B. I get it. No, just, just give me a second here. Hold on, hold on. He has got to be the most tragic hero in the entire... Sp Think of it this way, okay? The only reason Spider-Man teams up with Deadpool is so that he feels better about himself. Oh, my God! That is the only reason. There is no other reason. He doesn't actually like Wade Wilson. He doesn't even... He, when he looks at Wade Wilson, he's like, oh, 
you know, I may not be able to afford a car or car insurance. I'm still <laughs> delivering pizzas on my bike, but at least I'm not that guy. <laughs> that's what. That's what it is. Like Wolverine shows Deadpool more respect than Spider Man does. <laughs> It's like, wow, I have no life insurance, I killed my first fiancé, and I don't even try to take care of my second wife or my or my aunt at all. I let a butler take care of her. That's not even my butler. But at least I'm better than, Sl- than Wilson. <laughs> at least I don't have to shoot my dick off. <laughs> at least I've never done that. <laughs> I mean, there was that timeline where I gave Mary Jane cancer. <laughs> That's a totally different Peter. <laughs> Smartest dumb fuck God. of Marvel. And I have a college degree. I, I could be a this science guy. major. Oh, Jesus. You know, I'm looking back at all my favorite comic book heroes now. I'm starting to question my thought process. I'm going to I'm gonna get to Wolverine soon enough. I'm going to cry, B. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Like, I thought he had a tragic upbringing. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. There it is. There's the epiphany. Figured out Wolverine. <laughs> there it is. He is a PTSD human being that never got therapy. And can't die. <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to die, you fucks. So, in the comic books, when his girlfriends die, that's just an, a stepping stone in the age of Wolverine. That's like, it's just a... a it's Wolverine's PTSD mind making up a death for his girlfriend to make it worse for himself, thinking that he's he's tragic. This she died awful. In reality, she grew old and died decades ago. She just she grew old and died because she couldn't live as long as he did. But in his brain, in his fucked up PTSD brain, he's thinking, "I'm gonna kill you, Sabretooth." And Sabretooth is over here like, dude, I didn't kill your fucking girlfriend. I'm your brother. I wouldn't do that. You killed her! Stabby, 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 stab. Cut his head off. But Sabretooth can't die either. So he's just like, dude, you're fucked up. I'll just let you play your games. I'm going over here with Magneto. (laughs) Call me when you got your shit together. (laughs) Professor X brings him in. He's like, oh, poor Wolverine. I feel so sorry for you. I feel your pain. No, you don't, you dickless wonder. Sabretooth is like, you seriously? You, you took he's, he's almost as fucked up as Wade Wilson. I mean, Wade at least is blissfully happy and has no fucking clue what's going on. But I mean, sure he, he breaks the fourth wall, but at least with Logan, it's like I don't even know what the fuck he, even my name is anymore. All of the women they come in contact with me die. With my old age, Logan. No, she was violently ripped apart by Sabretooth. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, Sabretooth wasn't even in the same state, let alone the same country at the time that she died. He did it, I know he did. Oh my Wait, god. Wait, well, Logan, what did, she, what did she look like when you found her? Oh, her hair was just as red as the day I'd met her. Judging by this photo, she didn't have much hair. <laughs> um, so many epiphanies. <laughs> Let's see. We've done Deadpool. We've done. We didn't really do Deadpool. We just kind of threw him under the bus. It's we, like Deadpool. <laughs> we already know you fucked. So we did just the, sit on the corner. We did the Flash. <laughs> we did Spider-Man. I got to Wolverine way too soon, even though that was a great way to come up with it. All the comic books, that like nothing wait. in the comics is the truth. Wait, wait, the wait. Tr- I got one. I got one. Are you ready for this one? Okay, let's bring it on. Let's do this. Take something, take something, take something